Uh, we're just going to start with a little bit of background, like what brought our families to America. I just talked to my dad about this this morning as a refresher, okay. so <laughs> yeah, um, I feel like I shouldn't say some parts of this because it's like, it's one of those things where, you know, like Mexican people have been associated with crime so much that like you, some of the stories you don't even want to like tell, but like um, someone actually I found out murdered my great grandfather's uh, dad. And it was like this huge thing where my great grandfather got revenge and had to like flee the country. Um, yeah, so <laughs> probably not include that in this. But um, yeah, he came to America for a different life. It was not safe where they were at. Um, obviously, like our family was in danger, and he didn't feel like he could continue living there. So he moved to. He actually walked uh, from Mexico to Chicago uh, for five months. So. <laughs> It was when, pretty crazy. When, when was this? This was like in the 30s. Damn. Yeah. That's so crazy. he walked oh from God. Mexico <laughs> to Chicago and he started working at a meatpacking factory and I found out that he actually never became a citizen. So my grandfather was the first generation of American, but he was so proud to be American because uh, it just took so much for our family to get here. So I always wondered why my grandpa was like so American. Yeah. Like it just made me ashamed because I thought being Mexican was the coolest thing ever. Uh, especially when I was a kid, I was like, this makes me so proud. Like I love our culture. And he was like, I'm American, like Air Force. <laughs> like he wanted to join the military. He wanted to like fight for our country and our rights. And he just cared so much about this country. And he was just appreciated, I guess, his, his life especially knowing how much my grand my, his dad went through. So it was just interesting. Um, but yeah, my whole family really kind of rejected the idea of being Mexican because it was just so, like, they were in the middle of nowhere in America and they didn't want to raise any red flags. Now I understand because my great-grandfather wasn't a citizen. Um, my family came here because under the dictatorship of, um, I guess Papa Doc was his name, um, my grandfather was a journalist and... Um, Someone he knew, like a colleague, had written a really scathing, like anti-establishment, um, really pointed at the dictator at, at that time. Um, and he wanted to get it out there, but he was too scared to put his own name, so he put my grandfather's name. Um, and then, so then he became kind of like enemy of the state because of that. But he did, he didn't deny that he did it because he agreed with everything that was in it. And um, so then he had to leave the country. So he came to America, and I think it was during a time when. They were actually taking refugees. Um, Do you know around when your grandfather moved? Oof, this was probably like in the 70s, I want to say. Know. Maybe like late 70s. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, and then my grandmother was still in Haiti. Um, and she had a school that she had started. She started tutoring uh, kids, and then she ended up building her own school. And uh, it was a private school, but she would take a few kids that couldn't afford it sometimes. Um, but then when my grandfather moved here, she followed him with um, the kids, my mom and my aunt and uncle. I'm curious about what each of you witnessed about the way your family dealt with transitioning. Because, um, you know, there's always, like, there's usually a culture clash of some sort. Um, yeah. So anybody want to share? So I moved here when I was, I guess I was three or four, honestly. I don't know. It was around that time. We, we left because Colombia got really, 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 well, like, we moved, they moved back, and then the reason they left is because Colombia got really, really violent, you know, drug, drug cartels and stuff. Um, Escobar, I guess, they induced a lot of exiles. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, we moved to back to California to Burbank, and then from Burbank we moved to Florida. And then I grew up mostly in Florida. Um, and when we got there, like my dad still doesn't speak English that well, but he tries to be super American. Like he was like he voted for Bush like twice. Yeah. So like <laughs> like but like not because he knew what his policies were. It's just because his coworkers at the factory were right. all like Bush, and so he like tried to be like he like they try to push that so hard so like my mom said it's a very like very I mean Florida and Kissimmee and Orlando is like really diverse but like primary education was like super white she, right. took, she like took me around to different schools and like and I remember being like as a kid being brought to these different schools and trying to choose our elementary school and she chose one that was called like Pleasant Hill 
Um, like a oh, it was the whitest. Show. Like, I mean, it was straight up like. So I mean, it, 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 you know, usually with the white schools, it's more better education. I you know. Went, yeah. So like, I got thrown into that, and uh, my parents like, I, you know, I speak Spanish, but my parents were like barely like we didn't practice it. Like they didn't, didn't practice it with with the kids. They were just like, you know, we're not going to. We want you to learn English fast and, mm-hmm. and hard and, and, and simulate as quickly as possible. So they worked very hard to strip it down in the beginning, um, and then as I got older, I think they got it got it got tiresome. Yeah, <laughs> I think they got tired. For me, it, it was kind of similar to his, where my mother uh, grew up speaking Spanish, and you know I didn't at all, um, and she was one of the only kids out of seven kids to move away from California, where everybody was and all the family was, and everybody spoke Spanish to each other. So I was one of my only cousins that didn't know Spanish, and so I was kind of like ridiculed for that. Plus, I really, really hate avocado. <laughs> Which what? I do not understand. What? Yeah. Um, you should have thought of this before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Imagine this time, because that's an issue. Yeah. Mexican <laughs> yeah. Nah, but, oh man. Hey. But, no, it was just another thing that you know kind of isolated me from them. As I was growing up, my mom would watch these like novellas and stuff, and I would always be asking. What are they saying? What are I, what are they saying? And it's like at first, you know, knowing English first and not having the accent or anything like that was kind of like, you know, a thing that everyone was jealous of. And then as I got older, I was jealous that I didn't know another language, you know, mm-hmm. the, the heritage language. Yeah. When my family came here, they came in a, like a pack and a whole group of them. My mom is one of six. My dad's one of eight. And not all of them are here, but a lot of them are. And they have their sons and their daughters. And it was just like a whole group. And uh, first, they ended up going to the Bronx, which was, uh, I believe, like Arthur Avenue area, which was a predominantly Jewish Italian neighborhood. So they had that kind of influence. And then my parents moved to Queens, which was full of Greeks and other Albanians and Yugoslavians and people who were part of our culture. So it wasn't, I think we became even more cultured when we came here. Just like my dad ended up learning how to speak even Spanish fluently. Uh, Greek fluently just being yeah like going to the bagel shop in the morning and like being friends with like the shoemaker and all that it was very community based Um, we grew up in a household where it was both English and Albanian uh, spoken so I was always raised uh, speaking two languages Uh, but yeah I mean they they kind of embraced American culture in a sense of like freedom and open-mindedness, I guess, and uh, opportunities and education on that factor. But we kept a lot of our culture and a lot of, uh, we kind of made sure to hold on to what we had and always did our gatherings and, you know, church and all that stuff. They try to like keep everything kind of solidified in me and my brother growing up. So um, I think it was kind of useful in in my upbringing, I would say. My story is very similar to a lot of people and very different to a lot of people because we only moved up like 15 miles essentially from Mexico. We just crossed the border and settled in a border town um, in South Texas and down there it's 99% Mexican. Everybody speaks Spanish, uh, super rich in culture. It's Mexico except with American dollars, right? It's uh, the infrastructure, the American infrastructure is there for the most part, but all the people are Mexican. A lot of um, illegal people, everybody, Spanish is a predominant language. Um, So it didn't feel like a big transition at all. It felt like we were just like maybe in a nice city, right, Mm -hmm. in Mexico. Um, We would go, like my mom would go to Mexico every day. She would just drive down. She would work in Mexico, see my family. We would go down a few times a week, every weekend. Um, So we were always going back and forth to us, like the border didn't feel like a border. It just is just a drive, you know, that you pay three dollars to get past. Um, it's annoying when there's long lines, but um, I think as an experience for my parents coming to the United States, it felt very. Um, it 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 was it's one of those things like you don't know you don't know you know you grow up in this uh, culture that it doesn't make you feel like a minority because everybody around you is Mexican and. Uh, you just feel like you're one of a, a normal person. You yeah. feel like a normal person. And I think that it inspires a, a lot of confidence in a lot of people because, um, you know, a lot of people don't travel, get out much. 
Um, and when you do, that's when you sort of have like this like want to like go bigger, you know, mm-hmm. maybe move. Maybe I experienced that a little bit. But at the time, it's like you don't know what you don't know. So it, it's just Mexican, uh, Mexicans all around you. And it's mm-hmm. it feels it feels not that different than uh, or rather, I think it feels very different than maybe what some of you guys went yeah. through, like like these huge transitions mm-hmm. for us. For us, there was zero culture shock. Wow. It, it felt very, very normal. Yeah. yeah. A stereotype that you wish would go away. <laughs> there's more to Mexico than Mexican food <laughs> there's just like I feel like there's so many things about Mexican culture that are just like misunderstood in America and I feel like I spent a lot of time as a kid like fantasizing about all the things I thought were so like romantic and beautiful about Mexican culture and Mexican art and just all of these beautiful traditions and just like really like rich community you know and every time that I went to visit Mexico and I made like new friends or you know saw different things happening like it just inspired me so much because it felt like there was this whole sense of community and like love that was going on that I felt like in America we're very like separated and everybody's like on their own and like not really trying to like come together very often unless it's in like small groups but um I feel like I went a lot out of my way to celebrate the beautiful parts of it and you know Mexican people are hard working but that doesn't make them some kind of like servitude like kind of like they're not all day laborers like my whole family like that's the one thing that I can say like even if they don't celebrate like the culture as much because of the way that we got here I do feel like my family is so strong and so hardworking, and like every single member of my family is like trying their best to use their fullest potential to like do whatever that they're like meant to do you know like I feel like they're not wasting any of that and I think that's such a beautiful part of our culture I feel like you know none of them took it for granted right. in any way yeah. so yeah I could piggyback off that and say that, like, you know, growing up, I was kind of embarrassed about the stereotype that Mexicans are always working. And, uh, you know, my mother, she's, uh, she grew up on a farm, so she grew up planning things and doing a bunch of different things. So when she started to to get older, uh, my mom, like, has, like, three degrees. Uh, She's a jet engine mechanic. She's a like she can build a computer, she can drive an eighteen wheeler, she can um, do taxes. She can, she's a paralegal. She does real estate. She sells vintage jewelry. Like my mom does all this stuff, and I saw her working so hard, and I think that's why I'm mm-hmm. like right. that too. Like I'm that's music, I do video, I do like because I do work hard, and that's a stereotype that I actually embrace now. Yeah. Is that yeah? Yeah, I'm Mexican. yeah I, agree, I agree with that completely. And I, I can only speak to Mexican culture, but. It, it, from my experience, I feel like there is, I've been taught that there's, um, the answer is always yes and there's always a way, right? And it's up to you to figure that out. And because, like, you can get anything you want if you work hard for it. And I, I, I don't think that's an American value. I think that um, it spans way beyond that, but I think it conglomerates in the United States, right? And I think Mexico does a really good job of perpetuating. Um, that hardworking spirit because similar to you my mom has always just taken no job has been too big or too small for her yeah. same for my dad same with myself same with my brothers it's just like you just work yeah and there's absolutely no ifs ands about it you just like no one's gonna give it to you yeah mm-hmm. no one's gonna give exactly. it to you you know yeah. so you gotta do it you gotta do it yeah people truly identify like you know like you know cocaine and stuff it's always like right. Colombian is like you know it's just like it, that's just they're just it's 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 so oh, hard to yeah, separate the yeah, two totally. because it, it, it dominated the country for so long and ravaged it and, and it still feels its effects today yeah um so it's like it's that kind of like always trying to tell people it's like well you know no it's like it's you know it's not like that and yeah. it's um not everybody was involved in 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 in, in the cartels or whatever um <laughs> um no i mean but like i i i, I went to the i went to columbia the first time like two years ago and it's you know and I've been twice and each time I've gone it's you know I love it I I love it there the food's so good people are so nice the doors are open we were we shot a music video over there and we just walked around and I I mean of course of course there's like there's like danger in any foreign place but like we we literally walked into places and filmed. We were, we filmed in restaurants and no one no one. It's like not like here where everyone's like you need a permit. Right. Yeah. You need a permit. Like, oh, excuse me, you can't like, film like here. Sh- shooting, money out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, shooting in Latin America in general is incredible because everybody's so giving and so open. Like you can yeah. people want to help you make great work. 
they don't want to charge you and prohibit you and right. profit. Right. They yeah. want to make art, yeah. you know? And people are, are, like, down to help people yeah. that are trying to do that. There's, like, a little background story with, like, how um, uh, voodoo helped Haitians get their freedom. There's mm-hmm. that story of, like, Bukman and all that, right? But then, um, you know, Americans... Uh, like being curious and bringing back their stories or being confused or whatever it is um, whenever you hear voodoo in a like entertainment sense it's this like evil dark magic like I watched this episode of um, freaking what's that show again what's the Black Black Mirror no the Conqueror one the what? Oh, wait. What? American Horror Story. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. American Horror Story. And um, I think Angela Bassett yes. was supposed to be doing voodoo or something. And she had like the Papa color. Ligba. Which, I mean, I'm not even going to get into all that. But that's the <laughs> major stereotype where it's like, it is practice. And my my mom is a, like, she hates the word priestess because it kind of relates it back to Christianity. Mm-hmm. Not hates, but she would prefer that and not use it. But it's called a mambo, um, which is like ordained from like birth kind of thing um and um she's like one of the most supportive loving like all about like the crystals and the good energy and she always has a quote for you like that's more like yeah. in line with mm. what voodoo is you know what i mean and um when i watch um like programs about the spiritual spirituality in other countries it's uncanny how similar they are and I think it's more about like our original spiritual practices, um, and then you know, you know, depending on where you're from, it has a different name. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the biggest stereotype about Haitian culture that really irks mm-hmm. me. Yeah, <laughs> but I just wanted to add that. Yeah, yeah the name, it's absolutely. Like, it's actually Vodou or Vodun. Okay. But through American remixing, it's, it's like Vodou. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, you know, it sounds like it sounds like a ghost sound, like but it's, yeah. it's kind of it's kind of funny because in not in Albanian but in Serbian and Russian, uh, like Vodou is That's water. How, is oh, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's, Whoa. You know, my mom like, would probably make some correlation yeah. here, but I'm not educated enough. You gotta channel, channel a little bit. Right but now, now I'm, yeah, now I'm curious. I'm gonna I ask feel like her. the common theme of all of this, though, is that like America has this way of sensationalizing anything that's different and really focusing on whatever like the biggest like clickbait of it is. Yeah. Right. And I feel like that's such a good thing to address because all of us are creative people, and I feel like it's like the responsibility of creative people to change that narrative yeah. and like completely like help people to see all of these other things that we all notice are so beautiful about our cultures because this is all coming secondhand like you were saying from yeah. people who go and they see it and they want to tell these stories and things but people listen for the buzzwords and they're like oh you said cocaine oh you said <laughs> yeah. day laborers yeah. oh uh, voodoo yeah. oh yeah. shit yeah. Yeah. what is this topic. you know yeah. Yeah. and like, people ignore like movie, all of the though. periphery that yeah. makes it you know all one thing it's mm-hmm. like when you spread a rumor and people only exactly. hear the worst of it they don't hear how everything brewed up to be that point sure. so I feel like America has just as many horror stories as anywhere else oh and, we, yeah, and, and oh, all, yeah. all we do is like the Donald Trump thing where it's like but look at all this though uh uh-uh, uh <laughs> but look around though but these people are crazier yeah. and then we just ignore it all if and when you have children one day are there aspects of your culture that you want to preserve maintain um if so, which aspects and why? I grew up going to Montenegro every single summer. And I think that having, you know, that living situation culturally, like, you know, affecting your life is incredibly useful as a child because you, you get to see different, like, varieties of life, different varieties of people. So it's like, okay, so you, you have them here in America and okay, you can teach them the language and you can show them the dances and you can show them the music and teach them how to cook the food, whatever it is. But when you are living their lifestyle over there, I think that also has a big play in in how you kind of absorb everything. So hoping, you know, that um, the doors are open to come and go in the future for our kids. Um, I would love to have them just, you know, be there and have that and like spend time at least a month and, and kind of just take in everything and learn the language and you know I think it's important to to have that with them okay yeah I agree as far as the language I would um I would teach my kid Spanish for sure because you know there's just so much advantage to knowing both uh, languages um, you know just even living in New York 
like where if you go to California, there's like just so many places that Spanish is still spoken. And isn't it like the number one language still? in America? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it? like not really a foreign language in America. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so I mean, that's what I would. Nice. Yeah, I think it's definitely important to like instill a pride in your children about whatever that they have. Like, I feel like, you know, it really hurt me as a kid. Like, it was confusing for me not to understand that part of my family. And it was sad for me that they didn't really know that. And it was weird that my mom, who was not Mexican, was actually the person who taught me the most about being Mexican mm -hmm. and brought me to Mexico wow. when I was 13 and made sure I knew who I was and made sure that even if she didn't have the answers that she made sure I knew they were out there and that I could be a part of this culture and that it was a beautiful thing even more than you know my own family did and I think that that really made me confident growing up just like you know I don't I don't care what anyone thinks when they look at me like I know in my heart like I have all these different things that make me who I am and that's like the most like American thing I can think of identity it carries a uh, struggle and it carries um, legacy and then it's like that that that's that's real you know what I mean that's so so that's that is what makes people passionate and I feel like yeah you can't deprive a kid of that and so I mean at least when I have if I ever have children someday and I would like to have a family like I mean that's just like I'm gonna you know I think you, I have to I have to carry that that my identity and like give them you know obviously they'll have their own identity growing up in a different environment than mine but um it it, it will make them real and make them real people I right. think that's what identity does it makes you um, see the world in like the fifth dimension mm -hmm. because otherwise you're just you know you're a Trump supporter you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> I mean hate to be no. like but it's true it's true <laughs> otherwise you see the world in like a binary yeah. way oh it's so if true if you don't have identity yeah. you see the world as this or that yeah. but when you have an identity of like all from different histories and stuff like that you begin to understand that like the world is so much more complex and so much more rich that why why hate this why hate that well yeah. I think I think it just m makes you realize that the world is a really big place but it's not that different it's not right. as different as people th uh, or maybe as some people think it is because again even just from here we're all from different places but we're really not that different right. like we fundamentally believe the same things because we have that sort of fifth dimension to yeah to us and a lot of people have that right for me with my future family um, and what culturally I, I would like to pass down language is absolutely the key um, you know um, to to this uh, world so that's definitely a must uh, I don't know who I will, I will marry a lot of it will depend on my future wife right mm -hmm. I'm I, honestly not interested in marrying um, another Mexican or someone from Latin America even I would like to think that I would marry someone from somewhere else in the world um, because for me, I don't think I could ever have just like a Mexican child because I don't live in Mexico now. And I, instead of focusing on the negative parts of that, I would like to focus on the strengths. And I think, um, to make my future family stronger, I need to make them, uh, connect, be, I, need, I want to connect, be more connected to the world. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly w what I'll pass down, but I do know that it's going to start with values. Identity kind of prevents privilege from taking over like Oof, that's so good <laughs> yeah. quotable i just i, guess, I really do think it's, zoom think, in on that one yeah. 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 keep it keep it wide keep it wide um no no i think it, that's that's how that's how i feel like yeah. um and and i and i feel good about that like that's that's something i want to remember and yeah. like in, in, instill in my children and stuff and I and I, I don't think I don't think any of our kids are gonna end up being assholes. I really don't think I that don't because think so, yeah. because it's, no. it's 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 just that asshole phase, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Know, some kids are just assholes. There's like the teenager <laughs> aspect, but like, I know, but like, like, you don't like, know, like still I, an asshole. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but like I just don't I just don't think you know it's just like we're 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 always coming from a place of like of passion and love. I think in general towards the world and towards what we do and towards what, what how we see ourselves. So like, I like. You know, no one here is a spouting off hate. It's like what it comes down. To. What it comes down yeah. to, are like it's it's that's that's what I love b about being an immigrant. It's like being from a different country, coming yeah. to this country, but like carrying that legacy, seeing that legacy, and like wanting to the perspective. Yeah, yeah. 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 Perspective. Knowing what it perspective. was before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That gives all of us more empathy and more room that's to understand absolutely. each other. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. The, the key yeah. word is empathy. empathy. It's yeah. like what it I, definitely develops it, empathy. It's true, and it's like even growing up reading in English class or like um, art class or whatever class reading books about how 
this is what history has always been. It's it, the world is a story of immigration, and it's a story of revolution. And it's a story of just like displacement, you know. And um, right now, the world is is very stable in terms. If we put in like a big historical context, but it it's ever evolving. And to be part of that narrative, and understand that you're part of it, and to just be really, really cognizant, like, oh no, this is actually really normal. Like yes. I'm very normal. Yeah. 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 Um, and embrace that. I think once that that sort of like cloud of like identity, you, you sort of figure out, oh no, this is this is who I am. This is who I want to be. I want to embrace it. Then like the world is yours. You know, you can do totally. anything you want totally. because it's just you're part of it. 